Hello everybody, welcome to the home of Amy Coral. My name is Mark Eskenazi, and I'd like to take a few moments today to educate us and talk a little bit about the toxicity of trace metals in our system. And I'll start out by saying I'm not a scientist. Most of what I'm going to discuss is what I've read. I think most of it is consensus. If ever anybody would like to join in and share opinions, feel free to do it on the website here at Read to Read, or feel free to do it on my site or anywhere else. Part of what I'm discussing here is to encourage us to look further and learn more. So what is trace metals? First of all, trace metals are things like copper, iron, zinc, and they're all bad. They're bad for humans, they're bad for animals, they're viewed as nothing positive. Even though in natural seawater there are traces of all of these trace metals, and they are necessary in very, very minute quantities that we see in natural seawater. But what's happening is in our systems, in our aquariums, we seem to have elevated levels of toxic tra trace metals. And I don't know that we're spending enough time analyzing or understanding what's going on there. Well, Mark, how does this trace metal stuff get into my tank? Well, let's talk about the inputs of where trace metal could be coming into our tank. First of all, you've all been told before when you do a water change, don't do an excessively large water change. The reason for that is because some of the toxic trace metals comes from freshly made natural salts, that is salts that we mix with our RO water. One that needs to sit for a little bit to get some of it out, but more importantly, uh, we've seen studies, and I'll mention a couple. Uh, Craig Bingman, very well known and respected name in the industry, did a report in 1999 where he tested, I believe it was six or nine artificial sea salts. He found that they had all toxic trace metal levels. Uh, a few years later, Ron Slemat did a series of four articles on trace metal. And what Ron found is that he had, I think it was 20, 24 people send water to a specific lab, people from around the country. And they had all these waters tested for trace metals. And again, there were predominantly levels of higher trace metals in most of the tanks, or let's call it in the average or means of those systems. And again, we could look at some of the Ron Slemak reports. If you get a chance, Google it. He then went a step further. He then showed how some of these toxic metals inhibited the growth of embryos in sea urchins. That is, he's an expert at growing sea urchins, and he showed that toxic metals, I think he used copper, inhibited the larvae breeding or the growing of it. He did a third study on toxic trace metals, and a fourth, I believe, and he beat the topic up that toxic trace metals, he in essence calls it the reason why every five or six years we make an old tank syndrome and have to break down our tanks. Now, that may be extreme, it may not be, but that's what he called it, and I think he's a little bit more of a scientist than I am. Now, let's look at, look at the other side for a minute. There was a couple of articles that came out by Habib from Salford, and Habib indicated that the bioavailability, bio is the metal available for, for it to really cause damage to our corals? And basically, we find that trace metals get absorbed into either organic or inorganic substances in our tank. Mark, I don't know what that means. What are you talking about? All right, phosphates, nitrates that could be in your tank could bind some trace metals and in turn get skimmed out. Uh, trace metals can get absorbed into the algae on your rock. Uh, cyanobacteria can absorb trace metals. So our rocks by themselves and our sand can bind to trace metals. Well, Mark, if they bind to trace metals, can they come off? And the answer is yes, if pH levels get low enough. So again, that's part of what Slimac is trying to relate to as what is the old tank syndrome, that it's gonna absorb into your tank one day you get a pH level that's lower, and it could cause all of this, what was unbioavailable, now to become bioavailable in our tanks and cause the old tank syndrome. Now, now that I've scared you a little bit, let's go backwards a little bit and say it's not as bad as it sounds and it can be controlled. And the answer, what can we do? Well, we want to reduce the input, and we want to make sure that we export as much metals as we can. But Mark, where's the input coming from? Let's talk about where input comes from. Uh, Randy Farley and a few others did some wonderful articles on food and toxic trace metals. It's very common to find articles on food and their levels of mercury or their levels of copper um, because it's human consumption. Lobster has higher levels of toxic trace metals than let's say fish or shrimp. And those charts are out there and you can be seen, but the food that we put in our tank, and a couple of studies have shown even the dry foods that we put in our tank bring with them trace metals. So we're always adding trace metals by virtue of adding food to our tank. We're adding trace metals also when we use new salt. And again, what I'm saying is salt 
when salts are made, trace metals are an inevitable part of the byproduct. And specifically, it's not the salt that's necessarily bad, it's the salt mix. The things that need to be added to salt, such as calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, potassium, etc., they bring with them heavy trace metals. So what can I do? Well, that's why we do small water changes, not large water changes. That's why you let your water sit for a little bit and maybe run some bubbles through it. Uh, and, and again, the reason for small amounts of water changes is so that it becomes bio-unavailable and your algae and your rocks and your skimmers have a chance to use it. Okay, another source of trace metal, we've talked about salt mixes, we've talked about food. Another, what I believe to be pretty toxic source of trace metal comes from your two-part, calcium chloride and the alkalinity solutions that we use, the magnesium chloride that we use, all have toxic trace metals. Well, what do you mean? I use the pure stuff. What do you mean by the pure stuff? Well, at ME Coral, we sell pharmaceutical grade chemicals. Even pharmaceutical grade chemicals have some amount of trace metals. Better than pharmaceutical grade would be reagent grade. They would have less, but they're still gonna have a little. What many people in the industry use, and here's where I recommend caution, is stuff that might be for your garden, stuff that might be for your pool, and not wasn't really intended for human consumption or animal consumption, so it's okay to have some toxic trace metal in that, and we call that industrial grade. So if you're using industrial grade calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, you're introducing, in essence, trace metals into your tank at, in my system, behind me here, at 120 per day, 120 mils per day of each, and then some mag, so a lot more. So over the course of a year, Somebody can do the math and tell me, I've added significant trace metals with my two-part, I've added it with my food, and I add it every time I put salt in and have to wait for it to become bio-unavailable. Same goes for the two-part in the food stuff. It does slowly become bio-unavailable, but at some point it is there and it does cause damage and it does bind to our system. So again, what can we do about this? The options are GFO works, it binds metals, um, carbon works, Good skimming works. Uh, macroalgae works, as long as you're removing the macroalgae. That is, macroalgae will eat, or some of that metal will become absorbed by them, and if we were constantly removing and recycling our algae like we're supposed to, you are removing metals from your system. Uh, and lastly, I'll close by saying, make sure you're buying the highest quality two-part you can use. Make sure that when you deliver your two-part, example, magnesium, that you don't raise it more than, let's say, 50 per day, 50 parts per million per day, because if you do, you could be adding trace metals. It won't happen with the ME coral stuff, but I've seen it happen with industrial grade stuff where it causes problems. So again, good salt, good food, good two-part will be your best way to avoid old tank syndrome and make sure toxic trace metals don't build in your tank. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again soon.